Tonight on the show, we've got one of Hollywood's most famous directors. His new film is all about cowboys. Move. <laughs> He'll be here any second, so I better get a move on. Giddy up, Lightning, go! <laughs> We have got a great show for you tonight. Writer and director extraordinaire, Quentin Tarantino is here! <laughs> yes, he is! I know! Top Scottish actor James McAvoy is on the show! <laughs> Hilarious comic Alan Davies is here! <laughs> Plus, we'll be having music and a chat with the wonderful Emily Sunday! <laughs> Good, good, good. I tell you, so excited to welcome Quentin Tarantino onto the show, everybody. There he is. Now, either he's just won an award or his car's been crushed. We're not sure. Looks <laughs> <laughs> pleased. Now, here's his new film. His new film. That's Django Unchained. Yes, yes. The D is silent. Uh, rather like the N in Tory Cuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> think about it. Think about it. It cooks slowly. So he's filtering through their brains. Of course, Tarantino's first big film was Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> it features that iconic scene where one of the gangsters is tied to a chair and has their ear cut off. But well, obviously, he's tied to a chair. I mean, who'd volunteer to have their ears cut off? <laughs> Me, please. Then I'll see Viva forever. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin is such a hot director right now. The Hollywood studios are always offering him new projects. There's talk he's going to put his own spin on a few movie classics. Yeah. The Sound of Music. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Marple. <laughs> and everyone's Christmas favourite, The Snowman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, they heard it's Snowman. Hey, let's get to bed, on! <laughs> Later, we have music and chat from Emily Sunday. <laughs> but first, prepare to hello. Have a seat, have a seat. Yeah. Is this my favorite actor I see before me? Yes, it is. It's James McAvoy, everybody. Oh, oh. Hello, sir. Oh, oh, let me see you. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. And he's the Red Hot Directors, the King of Cool. It's Quentin Tarantino. Welcome all, welcome all. Now, I have to say, I don't want to be rude to my couch, but is it fair to say geeky? Is it a geeky couch? Because you're, you're sort of fa you're famous for... Uh, yeah, uh -huh. you, you've got an encyclopedic knowledge uh, of film. It's an aficionado couch. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> it's an aficionado couch. Okay. You're like the American Stephen Fry. Kind of, actually. Because, James, are you geeky about film or are you geeky about other things? I'm geeky about some films and I'm, and I'm geeky about Star Trek and I'm geeky about <laughs> not all motorbikes but my one rubbish <laughs> motorbike. <laughs> yeah, I'm geeky about things. Alan, because you've sat through, how many episodes of QI have you sat through now? I think it's about 150. So you must, are you like an encyclopedia? No, it just... goes completely in one ear and out the other. <laughs> No retention whatsoever. Do you not remember any of it? I can't remember any of it. The only thing I remember is there's more than one moon. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that because Rich Hall was on the show and he said, but we call it the moon, which I thought was <laughs> the funniest thing that anyone's ever said. <laughs> and there's more than one moon and they, one of them goes in a horseshoe orbit and there's something else. Ah. Oh, that's quite interesting. That is quite interesting. Ooh, quite interesting. No, I did it twice, and the only thing I could remember, they were asking me the other, the only thing I could remember is that not everyone's pee stinks after asparagus. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> Whose cool. doesn't here? Mine does. Yours do mine does. Did you? Honestly, you could do a show of hands. <laughs> Whose wee smells after they have asparagus? <laughs> Who, Who, Who's wee doesn't? Whose wee doesn't smell after asparagus? 
See, but Whoa. it can change. You can mutate into no. a stinky peer. Yeah. We can evolve as human beings. You can evolve because my pee didn't used to, but now it always. And the thing is with asparagus, it starts to smell almost immediately. It's incredible. Asparagus. You're still chewing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you did that, <laughs> well, if you pee at the table. Yeah, you know, if you just if, like, you, if you take uh, some with you to the toilet. Yeah. 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 Now you know what they say about eating pineapple, though, don't you? Well, oh yes. Now does that work? Yeah. What do they say about the What do they say? What do they say? tell. Oh, what they say is. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe you're going to tell them. Yeah, can I? Yeah, 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 very. Yeah. If you eat pineapple, don't you're... shit it out whole. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 if you, eat, if you eat pineapple, it actually. Uh, uh, affects the taste of your sperm. sperm. For the better? Sperm. For the better. Oh yeah. Well, well if you if you yeah. like, like if you like, we pineapple. can try it right now. Here's a pineapple. <laughs> Any volunteer? Yeah. We'll be here for an hour. Well, I'll eat the pineapple and you can try it and tell me. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if there's a job in it, if there's a job in it, I'll do anything. <laughs> I'm just thinking you've really got to plan ahead, though, because like <laughs> you've got to cut the pineapple, peel the pineapple, yeah. and then maybe no one's interested. And I think yeah. I had a whole pineapple. Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> you know, you, you, you... you're going on a date. You have high hopes. Uh... <laughs> What's the window of opportunity? How long does it taste yes. nice for? Yeah. Is there an optimum moment? <laughs> you're going to be saying it's 10:30. I taste fantastic now. <laughs> See, I do buy pineapple in Waitrose. I won't be able to buy it anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> I won't see it in my basket. It's like, like oh, 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 I know about you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Snack pack. <laughs> Now listen, we've got to talk a uh, quick tarot here. Seven movies, you've made seven movies, and your current one is on course to be your most commercially successful one so far. It might be, yeah. Django Unchained, I've seen it, I loved it. Oh, it's great. You. I mean, it's a proper Quentin Tarantino film. Western, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get to see it here on the 18th of January, it mm -hmm. is released here. So tell it's sort of, it's almost like a kind of a legend, isn't mm, it? Yeah. A, a fable told through a Western. Yeah, it has a very folkloric kind of quality to it. Uh, it's about an ex-slave. Uh, who's uh, bought and given his freedom, and he becomes a bounty hunter. It takes place, actually, sorry, it takes place two years before the Civil War. So it's in the antebellum South during slavery, and he's an ex-slave who becomes a bounty hunter. And uh, in particular, his job is to go out and kill white men, get the bounties for uh, criminals who are um, uh, hiding out on uh, plantations that have bounties on their head. And, uh, and that's a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've, got, we've got a clip. This is uh, Jamie Foxx. No, yeah, Jamie Foxx yes. uh, uh, as Django meeting Christopher Waltz, the bounty hunter. Correct. Who's going to, and and this, they, oh, first scene in the movie, yeah. Yeah, this is him in chains, and his life's about to change. I'm Dr. King Schultz. This is my horse, Fritz. What kind of doctor? Dentist. Now, are you the Speck Brothers? And did you purchase those men at the Greenville slave auction? So what? So, I wish to parlay with you. Speak English. Oh, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. It is a second language. Now, amongst your inventory, I've been led to believe, is a specimen I'm keen to acquire. Hello, you poor devils. Is there one amongst you who was formerly a resident of the Karukan Plantation? I'm from the Karukan Plantation. Who said that? <laughs> What's your name? Django. Then you're exactly the one I'm looking for. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see it there, but I mean, but as always, a stellar cast, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, Samuel Jackson, and I just wonder, does anyone turn you down? Well, every once in a while it happens. I mean, actually, one of the, you know, uh, a weird, you know, one of the things was, like, in the case of, uh, say, Pulp Fiction, I had worked with uh, Michael Madsen on Reservoir Dogs, and we really got along, and I thought he was terrific. So... I actually wrote the character that John Travolta played, Vincent Vega. I wrote it for Michael Madsen. Oh, right. And so I write the whole script for him, and I'm, I'm working on this script for, like, seven months. And he knows it's coming. He knows I'm writing it. He, and he's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to do it. It's going to be great. <laughs> you know? And, uh, <laughs> 
two weeks before I finish the script, he takes a job on Wyatt Earp, and he can't do it. <laughs> so that explains the Black Mamba in Kill Bill 2. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then did you have to really fight to get John Travolta into it? Yeah, yeah, no one wanted John really? Travolta. No one wanted really? John Travolta. Yeah, well, you know, they, everyone can say, you know, but at that, at that, in the film he did just before Pulp Fiction was Look Who's Talking 3. <laughs> you know, um, he's actually quite funny in those movies. That but, is a uh, great uh, film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a trilogy. <laughs> All right, it's a trilogy. <laughs> All right. Oh, the cross-referencing. It's like Back to the Future. <laughs> I can't imagine how bald it is. You're, you're a young director, you've got mm. John Travolta, mm -hmm. and you're mm. showing him how to dance. You're teaching him how to dance. I didn't have to teach John Travolta how to dance. Could you but... dance like that? No. Oh, yeah, no, I, 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 I wanted him to dance a particular way. It was a certain kind of way. I'll do it. You don't need to think. What? <laughs> All right. I'll try to let you know. Let me set it up. Let me set it up. Okay, you set it up. Because it's a twist. Now, twists can be kind of boring. So part of the thing about it is I wanted uh, Vincent and Mia, i.e. Irma Thurman, um, to have two different characters when they, when they twist. All right? When Vince twists, I wanted him to be kind of rich. <laughs> <laughs> like that. It's good. But, right, right, right. Right, 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 right. Um, but when Mia twists, the image that I had in my mind was the Zsa, Zsa Gabor cat from the Aristocats. And there's that one little scene where the Aristocats dance, and she kind of like... <laughs> Actually, just before we move off Pulp Fiction, have you seen... Have you guys seen this, the Pulp Fiction Kerry style? No. No. It's these Irish film students that are in Kerry. Do you know what Kerry is? You mean the Stephen King novel, Brian De Palma movie with Sissy Spacek, where the blood comes on? No, the... that's no, Carrie. That's Carrie. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking, I'm or sure I'd have seen that growing up in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kerry is a, a bit of Ireland. Really oh, remote. OK. It's, it's a remote bit of Ireland. Oh, OK, cool. So what these students do, they take, they take <laughs> a little clip from mm -hmm. Pulp Fiction, mm -hmm. and they've dubbed it over, but dubbed it over so well with quite broad Kerry accents. Like the Kerry Fermers. Well, you do have an example? With the Kerry Fermers and all this. It's like that. Uh -huh. It's like that. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> here, here it is. Here it is. All right, well, you can walk into a movie theatre in Amsterdam and buy a beer. I don't think you can take more paper cup on top of a glass of beer. In Paris, you can buy a beer in McDonald's. You know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese. No, they've got the metric system here. They don't know what a quarter pounder is. What do they call it? They call it a royal with cheese. Royal with cheese. What do they call it? Big Mac? Big Mac. See, Big Mac. They call it Le Big Mac. Le Big Mac. <laughs> what do they call it? I don't know. I didn't go to Burger King. That's good. Guys, to do the entire movie. I would like to see that. You're starting something, man. You knew it's coming. It's going to happen. I, really, I encourage you guys. You have my permission. Yeah. Pulp, pulp or fiction. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. Fact. Yeah, uh, talking of uh, directing and directing uh, John Travolta, uh, you just filmed uh, a film, Welcome to the Punch. Yes. Now, what's his name? Aaron. Aaron Creevy. Aaron Creevy. Yeah. He sounds like quite a handful. Uh, ooh, you'd have to ask his wife. He's great. He's, uh, let me preface what I'm about to say with the fact that he's the most sharp, intelligent, writes the best dialogue, writes the best character. Hello. And he's so... Uh, Hello. Uh, that I've Hello. Worked, <laughs> that, for me. Oh, I've never worked with him. <laughs> and, um, yeah, 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 we'll work that out. And, um, but Iran was just... He's unbelievable. He would do the running man for me sometimes just to energise me. And every now and again, he'd come up behind me and I was completely unaware, and I'd be getting ready to go and do a scene, and he'd just come up behind me and excuse my language, yes, just go, know. I'm gonna f*** you up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of brilliant. <laughs> In fact, he sent me an email saying that exact thing out of the blue just the other day, for no reason. <laughs> Welcome to the punch. Welcome to the punch. That's out March time. That's out in March. Yeah. Yes, that's me uh, with a lot of pineapple in me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a pineapple theme. It is. Yeah, yeah that's right. Because yeah. uh, Alan, you've done. Act have you had directors kind of really push you to the edge? Because didn't you have a thing in Many Splintered Thing where you had a chase or something? Oh yeah, no, I did. I did. <laughs> 
I had to do a scene where I had to get out of a bath and my, my wife in the show, not my real life wife in the show, she came round and uh, she wanted something and I had it and then, and then she took it and then I had to chase her around the flat in the nude, dripping wet. <laughs> and it was shot in February. <laughs> and it took 11 hours to shoot. Wow. <coughs> They're impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a really, really small, didn't need any more, <laughs> flesh-coloured triangle taped <laughs> over my tiny, tiny, shriveled genitals. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to run around this set for 11 hours, and eventually I had to pin her to the bed. And every, every time we stopped, they had to come and put more water on me, cos it had to look like I just got... It's like, you know like when they get a whale on the beach? <laughs> I might die if we don't keep him wet. <laughs> and I was shivering all day, and at the lunchtime, the actress said to me, have you got a problem with me? Cos I hadn't spoken to her all morning. I said, no, 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 no. I've got hypothermia. <laughs> <laughs> my lips, they're blue. <laughs> and then when they made it and they finished it, it was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, going back to uh, directing, Quentin Tarantino, this is your seventh movie. Mm. Have you thought of tackling Shakespeare? No, because honestly, he, mm -hmm. he's about to do Macbeth. I am. Oh, I whoa, whoa. You just said Macbeth in a theatre. Macbeth, Macbeth, Macbeth. Macbeth. You've got to say, no, you've got to say the Scottish play. Me and him are like Harry Potter. We're allowed to say Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> he's from Ireland, I'm from Scotland. And, like, kind of maybe allowed. you yeah. guys don't care about the bad luck. I care about the bad luck. As he said, I'm, I'm, uh, this might be my biggest hit ever. I don't know, all of a sudden it goes off the charts. <laughs> all right. Because no, I said... The Scottish play's play. real name. Well, the, well the, Scot the Scottish play. Oh, so it's good because it's got it's got lots of blood and gore. It's mm. got ghosts. It's got a moving forest. Yeah, it's right up your strata. Oh, I true say. that. True that. And people have actually made uh, 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 Shakespearean uh, comparisons to my work any old way. Oh. Mm -hmm. And down the end there, you've mm. played Lady Macbeth, haven't you? I did play Lady Macbeth. <laughs> <laughs> you did though. I made a bold choice. <laughs> <laughs> now I was auditioning for going for places in drama courses when I was a teenager and they gave you a list of pieces to learn, right? And, one, and it's all Shakespeare pieces. And I went, I thought I'd be different, you know, stand out from the crowd, did Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> Look, I've got a little bit here, oh. right? So if you wanted to do a bit, we've marked it up. Do you, you probably know it. I kind of know it. I've, I'm just in the middle of rehearsing it, so, yeah, I do know that bit, I think. OK, so if you do that bit there... And, look, I've even got a little... I've got a prop for you. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, that, that's that's true. True. Do, do that. I know! <laughs> if, you just, if, you just, if you just read that, that's your line down there. See where it says Lady Macbeth? Lady. Okay, that's you. Right, that's me. <laughs> OK, and then maybe you can give them some notes afterwards... OK, I'll just... ..just to uh, see how it might be, you know, Tarantino-fied. <sighs> right, there we go. <laughs> I promise I'll be a little bit better than this if you come and see the play. <laughs> um, Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth doth murder sleep, the innocent sleep. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, the death of each day's life. Sore labour's bath, balm of hot minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. <laughs> what do you mean? Know. That is the line as written. It's the line! <laughs> that is, that's, that's as written. So, Quentin, Quentin, what we can do is we can certainly make it like cinema shape. Do you want to, do you want to stand up? Yeah, yeah, a bit come easy. on. Mm -hmm. And everything? Yeah, and everything. And everything. So, right. so, so then we can, if we, we've got a bigger sword, I thought, uh, that's more you, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's Tarantino esque. Yeah, that's okay. Tarantino esque. Right. So, Excellent. we've made it cinemascope. Can we do that? Can we do that? Can we do, 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 oh, oh, there you go. Oh, there now, you go. Now you're in a cinema thing. <laughs> that's my life. Okay so, okay, so let me deal with the actors a little bit. Okay, here. you deal with the actors. Right. You'll deal so, with you're the playing in Scottish, right? Uh, uh, well, I don't have to. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just making sure that was Scottish accent. Okay, yes, okay, yeah, yeah. No, don't do Scottish accent. <laughs> Stay with that, stay with that, right, stay right, with that. I'm going to work that. OK, and uh, so I think you're OK with there, but, you know, really, you know, you can't have a prop like this and let this overtake you, man. You have to really play with it here. OK, okay. okay. really okay. use it. It's not, you know, <laughs> this isn't a toothpick, all right? And, um... What is it? OK. Um... It's like, it's like stealthy Nothing ninja directing. <laughs> okay, here we go. He's going to be pulling out all so, these cool moves. Yeah. Okay, so okay, here we go. Yeah. Right, okay. Oh, oh, should we have some, a bit of music as well? A bit of music, a bit of music. Okay, off you go. And... Action! 
Me thought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth doth murder sleep, the innocent sleep. Sleep that ravels up the uh, sleeve of care, the death of each day's life, sore labor's bath. Balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. Fuck you, you fucking fuck, what do you mean? <laughs> Hey, I'm taking that, I'm taking that. You'll have some dry out. It's beautiful. Now, that was Tarantino direction, but Jamie Lloyd is directing yours. Jamie Lloyd, the great Jamie Lloyd is directing yours. And uh, where and when can we see it? We are going to be on at the Trafalgar Studios, the Traff Transformed, as it's currently known, from the 9th of February onwards. And we have a very wonderful uh, outreach programme targeting first-time theatre-goers uh, and people who would maybe not always feel uh, that comfortable going to theatre, i.e. people who maybe felt alienated by the prices, yeah. which on the, first, uh, on the Mondays of every week we... Uh, make it very affordable. And Macbeth's a great one because it's short, lots happens. Lots happens. It's an easy plot to follow. Lots of killing, uh, a lot of nearly sex. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in our production, there is. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Is it set now? Is it set then? When It's set. It's kind of like if we took all the hot topics of the day so economic disaster, uh, environmental disaster, uh, Scottish independence, all that kind of stuff. Imagine they all <laughs> happened. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, and then 50 years later. So, is it kilt, no kilt? Uh, no kilt, no kilt. You, you, love, you love a kilt. No kilt, you love kilt. bread, no iron brew. <laughs> uh, there may be whiskey, there will be blood. No, <laughs> no haggis. Uh, there may be. That's a wedding there, invitation. There, there... <laughs> 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 that is actually. <laughs> <laughs> There may be Haggai, but we have not <laughs> yet uh, rested. Um, and uh, I suppose, it's, it, in a way, it's sort of fitting that you're playing Macbeth, because so many people discovered you in The Last King of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. which is, yeah. yeah. Love that film. You look amazing there. <laughs> How did you do that? You must have really eaten a lot of pies. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the end of that film, we've talked about this, is so intense, the yeah. you hanging... It's worse than anything you've done, the... the, the oh, oh, it's a very man called horse. Oh. I know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And check out my nearly six-pack. Excellent. <laughs> well, yeah. Eight years old, I don't have that anymore. Oh, oh. But that must have been horrible to do. Uh, that was... Uh, yeah, that was pretty nasty to do. And also, I was such a victim in that scene, uh, not necessarily of, of circumstance, because I helped create that circumstance as a character, but I was a victim of violence violence in that scene, and it is always horrible to play and great to play. But I was being suspended on this uh, little seesaw that got CGI'd out. How we had the money for CGI, I don't know. But, um, uh, and, and there was no weight on these, these ropes that had these things going into my fake chest. But uh, I, I was acting and doing all my thing and, and stuff, and, and I suppose I, I stopped breathing at one point, and I stopped breathing for too long that I passed out. And I'm just balancing on this little bicycle saddle, and I just passed out and fell off. And I was hanging upside down with this little wire connected to my fake nipple. <laughs> that's made of, like, silicon rubber. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and nobody ran in to save me as I was about to smash my head on the ground, because they all thought, crazy actors, they just do this stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably just acting. <laughs> About to smash my head off. <laughs> but Quentin, you have you you strangled Diane Kruger, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> how, but how badly did you strangle her? Well, it was interesting because the thing is, uh, <laughs> whenever you do a, a, a close-up of somebody being strangled in a film, yeah, e e I never I never buy it. All right, you know, because when somebody's actually being strangled, there is a, a thing that happens to their face and the, uh, you know, the way they're, the, they, they turn a certain colour and their veins pop out uh, and stuff. How do you know this, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Any time, well, yeah, it's... I, I, I guess I don't know that for sure, all right? <laughs> uh, but I can imagine. And, um, but it always just seems fake, you know, they're doing this all the time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This is an inglorious bastard. It's an inglorious bastard. Yeah. And so I talked to Diane and I was saying, Look, here's what I would like to do if you're okay with it, all right? Because I just don't want... I don't want any phony baloney bullshit here. Um, let me... I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I want to do it because I... You know, because if, you know, uh, it, it's on me. If it's like if... if uh, um, uh, I only want to do this once. I don't need to... I don't need... I don't need... I don't, I don't, need I don't want you breathing after this and have to come back yeah, and yeah, kill yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I just said to her, um, what I want to do is... I'm going to be the hands, and what I'm going to do is 
I'm gonna just strangle you. All right. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna cut off your air for just a little bit of time. We're gonna see the reaction in your face and then we'll cut, all right? The stunt guy will be there watching it, all right, you know, making sure, and we'll just, we'll just do it once. We'll just do it once, but then we never have to do it again. All right, and she trusted me. Wow. And so we actually got a really good thing. We were, you know, I, 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 you know it, it was real. It would look really good. But also, because I was, you know, able to, you know, um... Enjoy it? Well, no, no, I was... Uh, <laughs> also, I'm trying to get a reaction. Do you, do, do you ever try sex scenes in that case? <laughs> I'm going to put it in you. I'm only going to do it once. <laughs> Look, we don't want to be here all day. <laughs> now, Alan, is this, is, this make, is this making you nervous? Because you, you're, you're acting again. You're, back, you're doing Jonathan Creek again, yes, aren't you? Yes, we are. We are filming Jonathan Creek. Well, not, surely, not at the moment, but surely it's nicer than I this. Once had, someone once uh, put a vacuum cleaner over my face and it slightly sucked from my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this a new series, Jonathan Creek? It's a one-off uh, special. We might do more later in the year, though. Oh, I've got my fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm really glad it's back. Thank you. Because it yeah, almost seemed no, weird that too. it went away. Sheridan Smith's in it again, and we've got Rick Mayle in it, and Joanna Lumley, and Nigel Plain. It's, it's really good. Cut. And when's it going to be on our telly? I think it'll be on Easter. Is it an Easter theme? Does it involve a rabbit or Jesus? No. No, <laughs> no, no rabbits and no. Well, there is a kind of a. Resurrection-y. Resurrection oh. Yeah, it's quite clever. It's very clever, actually. Mm. Yeah. I look forward to seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we've talked about uh, a lot about acting tonight, but uh, Alan Davies, uh, a stand-up comedian again. Yes, Back I am. on the road. Is it ten years? Ten years? It's even longer. And the last time I toured was in 1999. What? Wow. But I did the Edinburgh Festival in 2001 as a stand-up. I just last year I toured all around the UK and I'm coming, I'm doing two shows in Hammersmith in February. The 16th and 17th of February. There's me, there's my poster, isn't it marvellous? <laughs> but, but listen, but it's, it's, it's sold really well, it's got really well reviewed. Are you kind of kicking yourself that you didn't do it for so long? Well, kind of. I'd sort of fell out of love with it a bit, but I really have enjoyed touring again, and I really enjoyed doing the show, and I felt I've got two small children now, so when I'm at home, it's quite, quite full-on, um, and then when I'm touring, it's like a day out. <laughs> 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 Wander around. I went to. I mean, going around Carlisle, which just turns out to be a really nice town. Going in and out the shops. I went to the pictures. It was like being on holiday. <laughs> and the show is really fun to do. It's really going well. So yeah, I've really enjoyed it. But it, it's called Life Is Pain, which doesn't sound like a laugh riot. No, Life Is Pain. And I saw. I thought that's a good title for a show. And then I saw the post. I thought, oh no, that looks like a talk about suicide. <laughs> Culminating in a suicide. <laughs> but no, it came from an anecdote that was told uh, by a friend of mine about a, a little girl who said that to her mum when she was being told off. She's about six years old, this girl, and she's been told off. And then she rolled her eyes and looked at her mum and said, Life is pain. And it's so. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious when I was saying that. <laughs> well, then they tell the audience that they all do what they do. They're like, oh. <laughs> the same little girl on another occasion, the mum was telling her off, and she turned to her mum and said, Even the people you love will betray you. <laughs> So it just goes into a little folder of notes awesome. of funny things. <laughs> yeah, doesn't she? Yeah, it does that like, character from one of your yeah, right. films, or from that kick-ass film, you know? The yeah, yeah, yeah. That. But oh, kick-ass, it's so English, isn't it? Come on. <laughs> but yeah, so that became the title of the show, and but mainly the show is about um, family, like my family growing up, and you know, and their life is pain. Let's face it, but everyone's got a little bit. But I don't dwell on that. I just touch on that, and then it's quite a lot of stuff about sex toys. <laughs> 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 but there's, there's bits about parenting in it, aren't there, as well? Yeah, my dad features quite a lot. My own parenting, uh, which is a new thing for me. When we grew up, we were always nagging our father for stuff to buy. My mum died when we were little, so there's just my dad with the three of us. I do remember him buying a lilo on holiday once, and this was quite a big investment, to buy a lilo. Yeah. I had a diving mask that I wore for the entire two weeks. I never <laughs> took it on one at breakfast. <laughs> I was ten, right? My sister had a bikini, she was eight, but a bikini came up round her neck and nearly drowned her. <laughs> so she pulled me under. So I said, give me the bikini, no one knows which one of us is a boy or a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the diving mask and the bikini on. I can honestly say I've never been happy before or since. <laughs> But when he got the lilo, to pump the lilo up, rather than just blowing it up, he went to the hire car and got the foot pump out the boot and he blew the lilo up in a really kind of vigorous way, like this. 
<laughs> as if he was on display, you know, but if you blow a light up like that, people will watch you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, Alan, come here, please. Test that now, test it, right? And I touched the pillow bit and it went bang! <laughs> <laughs> Separated from the main body of the lion, which I've never seen happen before or since. And he's looking at me like, you little shit. And that's totally <laughs> no hidden pins you've overinflated the lion. <laughs> oh dear. Now, before we, before we move on, very quickly, uh, James, you must mention your new movie with Danny Boyle. Yes, uh, you must. Trans. Is that that's finished? It's going to be March the uh, March the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Oh, that's March. my birthday. <gasps> oh, March twenty seventh is my birthday. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely day. night out. And we've also got Rosario Dawson in the movie. Who's oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, she's wonderful. Yeah. Ah. And now this movie, it's called Trance, and it's about memory loss. It's about. Uh, it's about. It's about your memory loss. <laughs> it's about... Uh, uh, very good. Very good. Uh, <laughs> it's about hypnotism, memory loss, violence, both psychological and physical. It's about sexual desire and it's about art and it's about theft. It's a psychological thriller and it's, it's very Danny like, Boyle. Sounds very like Jonathan Creek, actually. It's very, <laughs> very much like... And Macbeth. And Django and... Ch well, actually, I'll tell you what we do. To explain it, we've got uh, a bit of the trailer, which yeah, kind of great. sets it up and makes okay. it really... No piece of art is worth a human life. Where is it? I can't remember. I got hit on the head. That you remember. Have you ever been hypnotized before? Whatever is in his head, she can find. Now, I want you to relax, Simon. Stop. I hope it's cool. Yeah. I feel like him going back to do a crime, a crime, a crime film. Yeah, yeah, and you know he's just special whatever he does, like yourself, I have to say. But um, and he's a national treasure as well. And actually, as I watched, I realised we didn't really explain what it's about. It's you steal. I steal a painting. For, uh, I steal a twenty-five million dollar painting as it is being auctioned because I'm one of the auctioneers. Uh, and uh, after the heist is all over. Uh, when the baddies that I'm in league with decide to open the box that the painting is in, they bring out the frame and there's nothing there. And they come to me and they say, where's the painting? And I go, I'm honest when I say I can't remember. And that's where hypnotism comes into it, because we try and unlock where the painting is through hypnotism. And we unlock a hell of a lot more than just where the painting is. And the audience doesn't know where it is at the uh, during no. that part of the movie. The audience have no idea. They haven't right. seen it happen or anything. No, 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 no. no. And it's all about what you think you remember and how memory is actually a very creative process. Mm -hmm. you, it's an imaginative process. The whole yeah. film would have been if you just said at the beginning, just think where you were when you last had it. <laughs> 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 then, you, then you would have found it. <laughs> we had on QI, I had a QI thing, <laughs> where if you're looking for something, like your car keys, if you keep saying the name of the thing you're looking for, it's, it's, I'm you're more here. likely to find it. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. So keep saying, you know, boy self-respect. self <laughs> <laughs> I think it's mainly keys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. Right, uh, it's time for music. Uh, this singer has had an extraordinary 2012 and has just been on for three Brit Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Emily Sunday. <laughs> Hello. Hi, how are you? Really well, thanks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I hope it's as happy as last year, because what an amazing year you had. Last year was ace. It uh, was amazing. Because it, it was this time last year, you just got the Brit's best breakthrough, was it? Bre yes. Breakthrough? Brit's Critics' Choice. Critics Choice. And you made me sit next to Madonna. Yeah, you came <laughs> and you sang for Madonna. That yeah. was terrifying. You just got best old comer. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, this is uh, the, the album, uh, our version of it. This is the new deluxe one. But this is the best selling album of 2012. Yeah, amazing. Is it? And congratulations. Thank you very I mean, much. Just... Thank you. Thank you. 
it's that, it must be that scary thing now where you're thinking, oh, now I've got to do another album. Yeah. <laughs> People keep asking me and I'm just kind of delaying it, maybe thinking about other career options just in case <laughs> I can do something else. But, I mean, it's amazing. I never expected anything like that. And, uh, I mean, what a year. I don't think I can top 2012. I'm going to try, but... And now, listen, because I've got you here, I must... Uh, you must be sick talking about it, but I must just mention the Olympics. Uh-huh. Now, it was lovely seeing so much of you, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but... But how did you end up in quite so much of it? <laughs> did the closing ceremony people know that you'd already been booked for the opening bit? I don't think they had. I think it was a coincidence. And, like, <laughs> you just don't say no, really, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, working with Danny Boyle was amazing and um, getting to ask to do the opening ceremony was, you know, I was invited to their secret bunker and, and the whole plan was unveiled to me and uh, getting to sing Abide With Me was, you know, a great honour. Yeah. And then the next week, Kim Gavin, who organised the, the closing one, just got in touch, so... There you went great, yes. I, I know the venue well. <laughs> yes, I know. You were you were performing George Square at the Glaswegian Torch yeah, yeah. Center, weren't you? And and I, I, yeah, I ran with the torch. I well. carried the torch sort of towards you as you were performing, really? and then I thought I was going to get to go all the way and go great. Oh, then get to watch Emily Sunday, <laughs> and uh, and then they said no, no, no. You give it to somebody else. They give it to somebody else. They give it to somebody else, and then it gets <laughs> to her. And I was like, all right, great. But I get to watch her, don't I? And as I handed it over, they went, no, you're outside the fence. <laughs> I just carried the Olympic <laughs> I'm in films and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't watch the gig. So I missed it. Man. Have you not met before? Uh, no, I don't Because no, you're no, both from Scotland. <laughs> I know, there's only, there's only about five of us. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. Uh... Well, we, are, we are connected because I, um, I've written a song for trance. Um, you have, yeah. So we've got our Scotland yeah, and that. Danny and Christian were telling me only yesterday. Oh, and I was very excited. I'm so. really excited. But have fantastic. you ever been hypnotised? Uh, <laughs> no, I'd like to be. Okay. Uh, listen, Emily, you are singing. I think it's probably my favourite track off the album. Oh, great. I'm so glad because I thought this would be an obvious second single. Why? why did you... Clown. Um, God, I don't know. It just feels like a kind of sad close to the album. Oh really? But um, no, uh, we kind of wanted to leave this to the last one. It's one of my favourite songs. Like lyrically, it was one of the first ones that um, you know I really feel expresses me. So I'm really happy to to sing it tonight and for it to close the whole kind of album campaign. Oh, is this, is this the last single? Yeah, this is, yeah, I think so. You can milk another few out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you're, you're doing it live for us tonight, you've got yes. strings and everything, so mm -hmm. thank you very much. Uh, Emily, if you want to go get yeah. ready, off she goes. Yeah. I, should, I should be a gentleman. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Lovely. Famous Red Chair, but first, performing her new single, Clown. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Emily Sandy! <laughs> Please, I'll have 
time for thank you as soon as I win. I'll be your clown behind the glass. Go ahead and laugh, cause it's funny. I would too if I saw me. I'll be your clown on your favorite chair. That is one of the loveliest live vocals we've ever had on the show. Wow. Just wow, thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. <laughs> really, really, really gorgeous. Um, right, before we go tonight, uh, just time for a visit to the red chair. So, who have we got? Yes, wow. hello, hi. hi. Hi, hi, hi. What's your name, sir? Uh, Lee. Lee? Yep. Lovely. And uh, where do you live, Lee? Uh, London. Oh, in London? From, from Newcastle. So. From Newcastle originally. Yeah. And what do you do in London, Lee? Uh, interior design. Oh, right. What's your favourite bit of interior design, Lee? Uh, being creative. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Dull answer. Dull but, uh, answer. Yeah, yeah, being creative. Yeah, yeah being creative. Yeah, 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 I was thinking yeah, for yeah, rag yeah. rolling okay. or something. Right. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was being creative. Uh, <laughs> Lee, delight yeah. us with your tail. Okay, basically, um, apologies to my mum now, but I basically. was... <laughs> you know, I was with my uh, boyfriend at the time and I was trying to get to know him a little bit better. We were both getting to know each other a little bit better. I hear you, um, Lee. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> We were stuck in the moment and my, my phone somehow ended up on the bed. I accidentally leant on the bed and ended up ringing my mum. Um, obviously, I didn't know this until it had finished. Uh, <laughs> and then um, I checked my phone and I had a message off my mum saying, are you okay? You sound like you're in pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes, Lee. You can walk. Thank you. You can walk. <laughs> well done. If you've had to join us on the show, the red chair. Yeah, just pop out of our website at this very address. Uh, a huge thank you to my guests tonight, the lovely Emily Sunday, <laughs> Alan Davies, James McAvoy, and Mr. Flexen Tarantino. <laughs> Join me next week with comedian Bill Bailey, actor Nicholas Holt, and Oscar winner Denzel Washington. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Terrors lurking all around next on BBC One. Stay with us for the film thriller with a twist. The Village in a moment.